Uh, the report was uh, one adult and, uh, and one child. So we came up, we did a, a canine search, a dog search. We ran a technical search with uh, search cameras. And uh, you know, we did a perimeter search to search the structure. Unfortunately, there's uh, no live finds at the moment. Everybody's from a different place. They have the urban dictionary and you know, you know how country guys speak. Well, we got a deaf guy. We get a lot of visitation from various countries and we exceed over about close to 500,000, half a million people a year. Yatehi, greetings. We are in Minamit Valley a Tribal Park right now. Just a little brief introduction about me. I was born and raised in Minamit Valley in the Tribal Park. And I am a, a Navajo person, a full-blooded Navajo. I've lived here all my life. I've moved away several times to work and go to school. And I've raised six children here. Minamit Valley Tribal Park was established in 1958 and within the Tribal Park we are looking at 29,816 acres right now. Um, so it's been going for over 50 years right now. Last year they had their 50th anniversary and so as you can tell behind me the backdrop of Minamit Valley, the monoliths out here, the Mesa Butte and Spire is breathtaking for a lot of people worldwide so we get a lot of visitation from various countries and we exceed over about close to 500,000 half a million people a year uh, Minamit Valley is considered to be a tribal park not a national park so the people that are living within the Minamit Valley there's 14 families that are residing here <laughs> population between 70 people and they have a choice to live within Minamit Valley. They um, set aside alongside the road and um, set a stand and sell arts and crafts. One of the unique person that lives within Minamit Valley is our respected elder. Her name is Susie Yazi. She does a lot of demonstration of rug weaving, textile weaving, and she started at the age of eight and still continues on into her 90s. And she recently was awarded to from the government in Washington, Washington D.C. Um, Life Achievement Award and so she's very happy with that. One of the upgrade place that took place in Minamit Valley is the View Hotel, which I'm sitting at right now. The View to Hotel has opened up a lot of doors for economic development, and it's a great area, it's a great property out here. And as you can see behind me, this is the view that you will see from the the balcony of the View Hotel and everything, the, the restaurant out here has this view. So everything that we have here is just amazing because of it, uh, a great addition to our tour industries out here. I actually met Ryan when he was a sophomore when I was at UConn mm -hmm. and was recruiting him. And we were recruiting him. He's a good football player. He's a really good football player. He's from Maryland, so I know everybody at Maryland. Uh, it just worked out that Towson had offered him at the time, and he and his family felt really comfortable here committing. Everybody's from a different place. They have the urban dictionary and you know, you know how country guys speak. Well, we got a deaf guy. 
what makes you want to compete on this level as opposed to playing in a deaf school? This is Division One. This is, this is my uh, lifelong dream. Right. I've worked hard to get to this level. I know I can do it, so that's why I'm here. Um, my athleticism, my 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 skill. I think I'm doing fine. It's it's just learning the system. This is a heck of a lot faster than what he's used to, but there's tremendous potential, and he's not afraid of it. That's how I know he'll be successful. A lot of deaf people are looking up to me. Uh, I have to make sure that I uh, succeed and do everything right. The players here are, are really nice. They, they know how to work something out with him. So last night he got up and uh, the word of the night was slow. And he gave us the sign for slow. And then he pointed to everybody and told them that they were all slow. And for a freshman, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I know that I came here with, with a chip on, his, on my shoulder. I know I have to do twice as better as anybody else. No matter what the situation is, he really is not afraid. He's not afraid about being a football player, playing against bigger, older guys, faster guys, being in a non-deaf world. He just has no fear. We got guys from everywhere. Country, city, black, white, Mex uh, Mexican. We got some guy who's got Brazilian heritage. Now we got a deaf guy. And pretty much nobody cares. Doesn't really matter where you came from, it's where we're going as a family. And he's already in. He's already part of the family. These guys, that's what teams are supposed to be. Yeah. This two-story house, after the original earthquake, one house had fell on top of it, and there was a two-year-old girl inside. Um, she's either on the balcony or in her room, which is behind the balcony. And they believe that she's still alive. They've been hearing her voice ever since the original earthquake, but they're not sure when the last time was. But this morning they tried to get in there to try to save her, but that's when the second tremor, the really big one this morning, a second house fell on the house. Uh, the report was uh, one adult and, uh, and one child. So we came up, we did a, a canine search, a dog search, we ran a technical search with uh, search cameras, and uh, you know, we did a perimeter search to search the structure. Unfortunately, there's uh, no live finds at the moment. We're going to search for a few more minutes and then we're going to have to move on. <laughs> You know, I'll just suggest maybe if there's some local police officers around, we'll ask them, you know, if there's any other structures that, uh, that we can check out. 